What's going on, y'all? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone, and uh, coming at you from somewhere in right outside of Rapid City, South Dakota today. We are going to kick off, well, first of all, we're gonna do a video about how to put strings on a guitar. I know that's really basic, but uh, we, get a, we get this question a lot, actually. Um, and maybe you'll learn some stuff you didn't know before, even though you might have done it a million times. I actually like changing strings on guitars. Uh, as a part of this also, this is also gonna be putting the first set on for our five week long test. Now the cool part about this is, I don't know what strings I'm about to put on this guitar. Right now, Leslie is inside opening up a package of strings, not telling me what it is, and she's just gonna leave those strings on the counter next to the guitar so I won't have any packaging clues nothing like that those are the strings we're going to use for the how to put a set of strings on a guitar uh how to part portion of the video and then what we're going to do is we're going to play it a little bit we'll record it a little bit and get the intro are you good awesome so she has opened the set of strings and put it on the counter i don't know what brand they are i don't know what the packaging looks like none of that stuff so uh, like I said, when, when we get it all done, we get the strings on the guitar, then we'll go ahead and play kind of our opening with Brent, whatever this brand new set is. And I'll get first impressions and then we'll play it a little bit every day. And then at the end of it, um, we'll see how they feel at the end. We'll do a beginning to end comparison with this sound and then we'll put the next string on set, set of strings doing the same exact thing. So uh, let's get on it. All right. So... She put a set of strings on the counter, so we're going to go ahead and get uh, this Les Paul strung up. Now, um, every time we change strings, it's a really good idea to just give the whole guitar a wipe down, clean everything. A couple of little myths here. You notice that all the strings are off the guitar at the same time. There's no reason to do any sort of like, let's just say it doesn't hurt anything to cut them all off at once. It just doesn't. People will make stuff up about that, but the, the guitar is a lot more stable than you think, and everything is a lot stronger than you think. Um, so there's no, no reason to worry about, about that. And actually, it's the only real way to get your fretboard really clean, to polish your frets if you need to. You know, like Lizard's Bit Fret Polishing Kit, Go through here and clean all these frets this one doesn't need it this guitar is actually really 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 good shape cut all the strings off clean everything up uh, now on a les paul i'll show you something here so on a les paul this thing will fall off these actual this um little clip in here though on this particular epiphone allows it to be able to be held on so you don't have to worry about it falling off which is pretty cool but i actually like to take it off so here's what we're going to do let's put the strings on the guitar now this part's fairly easy right for those of you that are familiar with changing strings of course so we've got our high e and i usually like to just Put this through the tailpiece. Now on a Strat or a Tele, you would string it through the body, right? This is 10 to 46. So for our string test, I went ahead and picked um, 10 to 46 because that's what I play all the time. I figured that would be the most familiar. I don't know what brand these strings are. I have no idea what, what anything about them. Um, Leslie just put them here with no packaging. So that's kind of cool. We're just going by feel about which size is what. So this is our A string. All right. <clears throat> so we'll clip this back in just like that. Now this is where it gets a little kind of confusing for people because we want to be able to put the right amount of winds on our string posts. The other thing I want to do before I put strings on is, especially on less expensive guitars, sometimes these nuts get a little bit loose. So I keep my 10 millimeter wrench here. 
and I just make sure I don't t over tighten them because you don't want to do any damage but I just give it a little tweak just like that so to make sure everything is tight uh, because if those rattle or if the posts move around then that's going to lead to tuning instability and kind of other problems like that. Now this particular guitar has Grover tuners on it so they're actually pretty good uh, but still do some maintenance make sure that you have uh, that on there. So let's talk about how much string to put on. Now this is where we're going to get into a little myth busting too because a lot of people like to do these and maybe I'll try to find an image of this like over under tie it in a knot sort of thing. Here's the thing. If you do this correctly, um, and I'll show you how in a minute, if you do this correctly, there's no need really um, to do any kind of over under tie it in a knot, any of that fancy stuff. Now I know a lot of people, I've been doing it that way for 30 years, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. You can do it however you want but there's no need to We're, The way I'm going to show you how to do it will keep it hundred percent stable tuning. It will make it to where string changes are super easy. The reason I don't like to do that over under tied in a knot garbage is because if I'm playing somewhere and I want to change a string, um, then I have to deal with that doing it this way. I can cut it off and rip it off like in, Two seconds. I mean, you've seen people change strings while playing a song, right? I mean, that it's it's real. You you want to be able to to do that. So um, let's go ahead and pull this through and grab my string winder. So what I typically do is I put this string in the saddle. I pull it all the way through, and then. It varies a little bit because of the thickness of the string, but what I do is I go about a tuner and a little bit more. So like a tuner and a half. And actually on a Stratoratelli with a six in line, this actually works pretty well too. And then I back it up, okay? And then that's where I start winding the string. So now we start winding. Uh, we wanna make sure that the string uh, for a three by three peg head goes around the inside, not the outside. We want it to be, uh, so I guess it would wind this way. And here's what's gonna happen. By the time we get the slack out of the string and it's sitting in the nut, we have three winds and it's pressed up perfectly uh, so that the string will grip itself together. And we're going to talk about string stretching and seating here in a minute, where we're going to get all the strings on the guitar first. But that tuner and a half length, pull it back, then start winding it on, gives us almost exactly the right length um, every time. So, and that'll work, like I said, on a Strat, on a Tele. Um, the distance between the tuning keys is fairly similar, so it's pretty close. And so that's what I, I like to do. Um, here's the thing. <clears throat> People talk about locking tuners being, you know, you have to have locking tuners for tuning stability, all that kind of stuff. Locking tuners are convenience, nothing more. Um, they don't introduce tuning stability as long as you're putting the string on the guitar correctly. Doing it this way gives us enough wraps for everything to lock together and be stable, which is 100% important. But it also... Um, makes it to where there is no doubling up. So what we don't want to have happen is we don't want to pull the string so far back that now we've got the string wrapping around multiple times and piling up on each other. And then all of a sudden you have this coil that has to expand and contract all the time. Um, and that will cause tuning stability problems. Three winds is perfect. There's no nut there's no knot that needs to be tied. There's no over under, none of that kind of stuff. This will not slip. And I'll show you how to make sure of that in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with the other two strings on this side. Pull it all the way through, put it in the saddle. 
tuner and a half, back it up. Around the inside. And I like to just use my finger there to guide it on to the correct way. And you'll see as the string gets smaller that that distance is going to give you more winds. It might give you like four wraps on a smaller string. But it also doesn't matter because the diameter is smaller. And so there will be room for it. So it won't really matter. So we've got our uh, base side strings put on. And they are all basically three winds going all the way around. Now we're going to do our treble side which is going to give us now this way we're going to go the opposite direction because we still want it to be on the inside so this is sort of backwards from my left handedness but all right so all the strings are on the guitar um, now we're going to talk about how to tune it up to pitch correctly and how to stretch the strings so that we have good tuning stability right out of the box and we can just play this guitar and not have to worry about it. So many people will be like, I have to put a set of strings on the day before, let it sit around before I play it at a gig. Nobody, ain't nobody got time for that. I'm gonna show you how to do this to where you will do it the same way every time and then your guitar will stay in tune from the first song till the time you take the strings off. So uh, let's do that next. All right, so first things first, we're just gonna tune this thing up to pitch. Okay, so now the guitar is tuned to pitch. Now you're going to say, well, you left it laying flat. It's, it's okay. We're just trying to get it to pitch. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to stretch the strings. Um, this is also kind of another thing that people argue about that strings don't actually stretch. They're just seating in, etc. We actually did a video on this um, a couple years ago where we actually measured the distance from a, a point to a point on a string, stretch the string, and it actually stretched quite a bit. So um, this is, to me, the most important part uh, of putting the strings on other than how they go on to the tuning keys. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your thumb, we're gonna start with a high E string, you're gonna put your thumb on the first fret, and then you're gonna take your opposing thumb and index finger like this, and we're going to start at one end of the string and work to the other end. We're going to do that twice, typically two or three times. On the E string, be a little careful because you can break it. I have broken it doing this. So just be, you'll feel it. You'll feel it. Put, and having your thumb on here is important because you don't want to snap your nut. You don't want to have any kind of problems like that. So then we're just going to do that on all the strings two to three times. They actually have a tool for this called the st string stretcher. It actually works pretty well. I just don't have one. The one thing I'll tell you too is be careful. Obviously, I have grooves in my fingers from doing it. Uh, on your bare strings, maybe if you want, you can use a paper towel or something so you don't cut. I have actually cut myself. Um, so maybe a string stretcher is a good idea for some people. I do it so much now that I don't worry about it. But. All right, so we've gone the entire length of all the strings. And what's really interesting about this is pretty reliably, we're a half step down to almost a full step down. Yep. On every string. So now we'll hold the guitar in playing position. Yep, and every string was basically a half step down. Cool. The strings are on the guitar now. We can go ahead and clip the string ends so nobody gets poked in the eye. All right. Um, Cruise Tools string clippers, the best. Not going to lie. All right. So there we go. So the strings are on the guitar. They are stretched, and the tuning stability will not be a problem. We'll be able to play this guitar all week. Um, I'll be able to start playing it right now. In fact, we're gonna do that. We're gonna go get an amp and we're gonna do our sound sample A for our new strings. And then I'm gonna start playing this stuff um, all week. So hopefully this helps out. So let's hear what these strings sound like 
when they're brand new. Again, I don't know what they are. I don't know what brand they are, uh, anything about them. We just want to get an unbiased kind of opinion. And I'm going to play them a little bit for five. I'm going to play them every day for five days and then take them off and put another set on, kind of do the same thing and see what our favorites are. You put your comments in the comments as well about what you think, how they sound. I'm gonna use the same profile. We're gonna use the same sound. We're gonna use the same everything every day. So it'll be easy to compare. So let me grab the Kemper and let's do that. So string set one, first impressions. Um, I don't know what they are. Um, I played them for about, I gave you just those clean chords. You know, we'll do that probably the same way every time um, or as close as possible anyway. Uh, I played it for probably another 30 minutes after uh, what you just saw. And my first impressions are the string tension for this set is a little bit higher than like the Ernie Balls that I always play. Whether that's good or bad, it's no big deal. I just want to mention that I can definitely feel that the string tension is a little bit higher. Um, even though they are 10 to 46, everything we're using is 10 to 46, but sometimes they just feel a little different. Um, they're not noisy. They don't make a lot of slidey sounds, uh, which is pretty cool. And they stayed in 100% tune. Like I said, um, when you put them on the guitar correctly and you stretch them correctly, I played for a half an hour, checked it every five or ten minutes, and never had to change anything. Like, they stayed in tune the entire time. Um, volume is good. Feel is good. I like them. They're good. They're, they're good. We'll see how they last as I uh, play over the next five days. So there you go. If you have any questions or comments you want to add, put them in the, descri in the comments below. Um, we'll put links to all the strings that we're using in this test. If you want to buy them and try this at the same time as me, you can do that. That would be awesome. Um, and last month's video uh, for guitar setup is now available on our Patreon to our $10 patrons, the, the one we, our special class. So you can check that out. And also, uh, we've got a bonus class coming next week for those of you uh, that are on Patreon as well. So on uh, this coming Sunday, on the last Sunday of August. So can't believe that's actually happening, but there you go. Thanks for hanging out and uh, we'll see you later this week.